Servus, Freunde. Meine... Sorry, sorry. Yes. Do you have a cigarette for me? But, Buddy Meister, smoking is injurious to health. Smoking causes cancer. Sure, why not? Thanks. I was scared I might die if I didn't get one. But sometimes things really aren't as they seem. Which brings me to you, Jimmy. You like doing short movies, don't you? Well... I look for directors who take part in a short movie compilation about a specific theme. Okay, what's the theme? Death! Sure, why not? Dead. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and I'm Dennis the Buddy Meister. Today we review the winner of our Bengali Movies Patreon poll. The choices were Antahin, Apu Panchali and Shotush Kohn, which won the vote. Unfortunately, yes. Come on, don't be a dick. Alright, sorry. Shotush Kohn, which means Quadrangle, is a 2014 Bengali thriller that was written and directed by Srijit Mukherjee. It stars Aparna Sen, Chiranji Takaborti, Gautam Ghos and Parambrata Chatterjee in the leading roles. In Shotosh Kohn, the four of them play directors. And as a matter of fact, all four actors are also directors in real life as well. So you have that slight meta touch. The story of Shotosh Kohn is that these four are brought together by an unknown producer to make a film. Each one is supposed to make a short film about a specific theme. Death. Yes, and what can I say? I was kind of expecting a high quality Bengali movie. You know, we, or rather I, haven't seen any modern Bengali movies, but we heard and read a lot of good stuff about this one, so it's a pity that I didn't like it that much. I've only seen Bella Sheshe a while back, and that one was really nice, but Chotoshkon was quite a disappointment, to be honest. Let's start with the structure of this movie. We have the overarching story of the four directors who meet and talk about their short films. They exchange ideas and philosophize about film and then we have the inner level of the story where we actually see the movies that each one of them envisions. We jump back and forth between reality and the short films. Of course, we already know that this isn't just a normal story about four directors making movies, because the beginning of Jotush Kohn confronts us with a suicide and a little boy looking at the body that's hanging from the ceiling. And we don't know how that will tie into the story, but we know that it will tie into the story. Yeah, and I don't know if that's a good thing or not. We knew that some kind of twist, some kind of revelation would eventually happen. On one hand, this of course provides excitement, but on the other hand, we also knew that probably a lot of stuff that we are seeing before this revelation either won't make much sense or simply will not matter. Which wouldn't be a problem if that stuff is exciting and well done in itself, but most of Shotosh Kohn is rather average and some elements felt quite off to me. One of the first things I notice is the excessive use of music. It's just too much. There's rarely a scene that's not underscored with some kind of music. It's distracting and it gives a lot of scenes a very cheesy touch. The four short movies are differentiated by color. One movie is green, one is red, another one is blue-ish and one is black and white. And of course the real world is shot in normal colors. Now Chotish Khan has this meta level going on where people talk about movies, stop each other during their thought process, they rewind and stuff like that and they actually mentioned that Bengali cinema hasn't been very experimental. So it's pretty obvious that Chotosh Kohn wants to be just that, experimental. That's true, but those short films aren't really remarkable enough to really stand out as anything super original. Neither on a technical level nor by the content of their stories. The red one about a guy who is desperately searching for a cigarette was probably the one I liked most. Because it had a decent flow and for that one I really enjoyed the music. It sucked you in and it had some atmosphere for sure. Even though the story itself is also not not that interesting to be honest. Unfortunately the black and white one is a bit boring because that one only really makes sense much later on. The blue one only exists for its twist and the green one was kind of stressful to watch, but not in a good way. And I know that Chotosh Kuhn is not just about those movies and they are merely a part of the whole, but they also have very little to none connection to the overarching narrative. And that story on the other hand only really gets tense at the very end. And 150 minutes is a long time, if there are only some segments of it that are of any real importance. Exactly my thoughts, especially because three of those four short movies really don't matter at all when it comes to the outcome of the story. There's simply no connection to the revelation in the final act. 
The black and white movie has some kind of connection, but it's also rather peripherally. And maybe Srijit Mukherjee knew that and chose this erratic style of narration with the back and forth for this reason, to make something exciting that actually is not. And there are two side plots that don't really add that much either. The first one is the story about the son of Diptu who has problems with his father's younger lover. The other one is how Diptu and Trina, who once were a couple, are getting closer once again. At least the latter might have some significance, because at least those two are part of our main characters. But neither the dialogue, nor the acting, or the way everything is shot are very engaging. There are a few nice shots that have a certain kind of surrealism and a great depth to them. But other than that, yes, it's not a very good looking movie. And by the way, I didn't really like any of the characters, which 9 times out of 10 makes it hard for me to get into and really like a movie. There's just nothing you can hold on to, especially when a lot of the other things aren't that great as well. Now let's talk about the final act, the revelation. So spoilers from here on out. We learned that Joy was the little boy at the beginning of the movie and that the woman who committed suicide was his aunt. She supposedly killed herself because her husband, Joy's brother, went bankrupt after Dipto, Trina and Zakyo abandoned his movie project. And he also lost his mind over that. And Joy planned the whole thing with the four short movies to get them all in one place so that he could kill them Russian roulette style. <laughs> Yes, elaborate plan. I thought the character of Joy was actually the most fun element of the film and his turn in the end was nicely done. His movie was the black and white one and as it turns out that one tells the story of Dipto, Trina and Zakyo. And the way the reveal is unfolding is quite good and I would be lying if I said that those final 30 minutes weren't thrilling to some degree. But they also manifested what we thought from the very beginning. That a lot what we saw earlier didn't matter too much. And also to be honest I don't really understand why why she killed herself? Just because her husband is in financial trouble? Of course that might be something serious, but it's kind of a weak explanation to get a story like this going. Absolutely. We know that Chotush Khan is full of meta jokes and references to other movies. Some of them we got, some we didn't. But at the point where you know where the story is going, everything feels a bit narcissistic. Too many things are in this movie for no reason. Now you could say that the short movies aren't supposed to have any connection to the outcome, because Dipto, Trina and Sakyo obviously did not know about what's going on. But I still have to wait for the reveal. And I think I said it before. Before, but in my mind a twist does not automatically make a movie better and it certainly does not make you forgive everything that happened before it. Oftentimes it's rather a cheap option to try and make your story better in the end. On point. The short stories function almost like red herrings. Things that might make you think and theorize about the overall story. Also to confuse and distract the audience. But like I said earlier, they are simply not exciting or special enough. Maybe we simply couldn't connect with this story and the way it was unfolding. Shotosh Kohn gets love from so many people. I mean, that was also the reason why I picked it as a choice for our poll. I think it's fair to say that we are not the biggest fans of Chotosh Kohn. Unfortunately, no. This might also be another case of cultural differences. Maybe we didn't get a lot of stuff that's typical for Bengali cinema. And maybe there aren't that much mystery thrillers coming out of that industry. So Chotosh Kohn might as well have a special place in many people's hearts. But it wasn't for us. So what would you say in German about Schottischkorn? You wish. What would we say in German about Schottischkorn? Fine. Schottischkorn ist ein mittelmäßiger Mystery Thriller, der sowohl auf technischer als auch auf narrativer Ebene nicht ganz überzeugen kann. Anstatt sich auf eine tiefergehende und sinnvolle Geschichte zu konzentrieren, wurde einmal mehr zu viel Wert auf die große Enthüllung gelegt. I give Schottischkorn 6 out of 10. It's more like 5.6. But I don't do that. For me, it's 5 out of 10. It's more like 5.3. But I don't do that either. Stop it. I said stop it! Did you know that the cinema of West Bengal is called Tollywood, just like Telugu cinema, and it actually was the very first Hollywood inspired name dating back to 1932? Didn't know that. But why Tollywood? Well, American cinematographer Wilford E. Deming named it after the Tollygung district where the industry was based. Interesting. What are your thoughts about Schottuschkorn? Leave a comment and hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Letterbox, and now also on Patreon simply at the Jimmy Cage. And you can hit me up on Twitter at the Bodymeister. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like. And make sure you hit that bell for all we have to tell.